automatically think of the cotton mills and the cotton industry. Um, I have a family history of um, family workers in the cotton mills as well so it, can, it feels very relevant to me. It feels very important as well that, that the stories from the cotton mills aren't forgotten because it's a huge part of where we're, we're all from. We actually started researching cotton in December 2016 and we went to lots of different mills and got lots of information, just basically tried to soak up as much as we could. We started in the studio back in January and we just wanted to just create as much movement as we could from all the different kinds of machinery that you see in the cotton mills, all the, the situations that workers would find them in, even home life we looked at and just try to take ourselves right back to the turn of the century and explore the, the lives that people would have had. I think because I'm born and bred from Lancashire, it really has, it, I feel a really strong connection with the piece. Um, my knowledge of cotton, the cotton industry, was very limited before I started the process. Um, but through the, the two stages of r and I feel like I've really started to realise this is part of Lanc Lancashire heritage and it's something that I'm really proud of. The rehearsal process has been absolutely magical. It's really fantastic to be able to go on a journey with the piece. Um, so we're, we're delving into pockets of lifestyle, of being able to go from a real fun social environment, say clogging for example, it's like a, it's a social, um, social practice. And then we actually explore harder, more mechanical movement and then also emotionally. It is, it is our heritage, it's really, um, it's really rich in our history, um, but I never really learnt about it at school or anything, so um, no, I came into it pretty blank, so I had a lot of um, like Wikipedia searches and stuff before, uh, before coming into the rehearsals. But I think it helps, the more you know about it, um, the, more you, the more you can say back. Um, yeah, and it can, it can sit in your body because to turn a big bit of machinery into dance movement can sometimes seem a little bit counterintuitive because we're, we're not machines, we're people. But the interesting thing about how the piece took a turn with the new development was that it became more, right, we're machines, okay, now we're humans. And it was this big relationship between the two. And that was, that was interesting to me. Um, the highlight of the process for me has been working in the room with the dancers. I find it much easier work collaborating in the room with people rather than um, being in my own studio, imagining what would be. Um, being in the room always brings more, brings more out of the piece. There are lots of natural rhythms within, within the mills, so it's, it's collecting all those sounds in order to make the textured soundscape for the piece. Loads of machines that we use, there's um, you know, carding machines, spinning machines, water wheels, um, and got all of those, made them into beats as well as rhythms, um, used the textures from those, remnant sounds from those to uh, create the, uh, the mill world.
taught it at school. It was, yeah, and I feel it should be, and it's important that we're going to be going into schools and teaching them about it, because otherwise it will get lost with the generations, and it, it is really important that people do know about not only the, the process of it, but also the, the hardship that the workers were in and, and their lifestyle. Dance is just an excellent form of getting into any subject. You could do a dance about your science project, you could do it about history, about your literacy. It just fits into any stories that you're reading in class. You can dance about anything. So it's a really great creative way of linking it with the cross-curricular links. Well, the theme of our dancing that we were doing was uh, cotton mills. And we all have to pretend to be children from the Victorian era and um, that we work in a cotton mill. Um, I find it a fun, more fun way to learn about history because you can get active doing it. Like usually, I this is this is my second school, and when I did history there, we sat down and like wrote about things we knew, or wrote, wrote down things from books or websites. So I like doing it here where we can like dance and act about it, so we can get active doing it. Well, it's brilliant the children are getting to choreograph themselves and not just being taught simple steps that they're using their creativity and the things that they've learnt about um, machines and they're using that then with their bodies, which is just brilliant and that'll really help with the writing again. It helps to like, actually feel the feelings and that's dancing and then when like, reading about it just helps you find more facts. Because it's incredible actually how much has changed from the past and it's good to know what actually happened in the, this country and in our city of how, like, what actually happened. Like, it's changed so much and we should know how they actually felt. And we've got a, a Lancashire tour coming up. So we're going to perform in Nelson, Burnley, Clitheroe, Preston, Lancaster and Kendall actually as well. So we've got a really nice little tour. We're going to be working with a community cast from uh, the local area as well. Uh, dancers of all ages, so that's really exciting for me to really, really spread those stories wide by you know, having a really nice broad ranging uh, participants. When trade is low, the limbs may slow, there's not much left to be made. In cotton is sad for the working land, we start at the weaving trade. So, so, uh, a member of the community cast, we were involved in sections of the movement material or learning sections of the, the same movement material that the, that the um, professional dancers do. So it was quite a challenge for me because I had Eliza on my hip. Um, uh, but we managed it, so I was able to adapt all the material. What's your special role? Being the shuttle. You're the shuttle. When we do the power loom section, so Leon ping, is the shuttle running the between middle. the middle, running down the middle of the quite, power loom. Quite treacherous, because he could be crushed. <laughs> by the, uh, it's the very authentic. <laughs> It's just, it's just a new exciting thing to do, like, it's good to get involved with something local as well. And My grandma like told me stuff about it and then obviously I've, I've come and learned a lot more about it so I can go and like tell her what I've learned so she can like yeah, um, I, didn't, I, didn't know, I didn't know anything about it and like, I learned about it and then I went home and asked my family and it turns out that they, like, a lot of them was actually involved in it as well but I didn't know until like, I researched for it. I thought 
was just wonderful. I mean, I've seen a lot of dance, but I'd, I've always been a real advocate of dance on the street so that anyone who's passing can, can see it because not a lot of people would be able to see contemporary dance, which is what this is basically. Um, and it's just so accessible to people who aren't used to it. It's quite a pleasant surprise. It was nice to see it done in Nelson as well by the uh, by the shuttle. Because um, we learnt a lot of new stuff, and now we've found out what this is. Like, I'm not really into olden days, but when I actually sat down and sort of watching it, like, it was fair good. Because Nelson was obviously quite a big um, cotton milling place during the industrial age, so it's nice that like the newer generations can learn more about that, you know, through. The dancing. It inspired and it's very nice smiling faces and uh, it's uh, traditional and uh, it's good for uh, I say history, history point of view. So I'm really happy because my daughter likes it and me too. A really magical um, piece of work, the way it captures the people and that kind of history of what went on in the cotton factories and seeing the dancers as people, it, I thought it was a fantastic performance. It was actually a really magical experience to be able to put on work that I feel very, very uh, connected to. It's part of my heritage, and I feel like I'm, I'm feeding back um, skills as a dancer that I've developed over the years, and I'm bringing them to the region that I'm very passionate about. I've always been involved in like Lancashire traditions, in song, music, dance, dialect, but the dance side's always been club dancing, Morris dancing, baron dancing, sword dancing, the sort of traditional, if you will, dances and this is something entirely new to me. It's something entirely fresh, it's a completely different way of looking at it. He set me again looking at the same thing, only different. And uh, and it sort of lit me up like a little firecracker it did and I thought, yeah, all these songs, you don't just have to sing them, you can interpret them in an entirely different way. And that, what I've just watched there is, is the story of cotton. And cotton is what made Lancashire and hundreds of thousands of workers, thousands of mills, tens of thousands of looms, millions of spindles made Lancashire what it is. And what we've got and what we've got left is what we've done there. And it's what I sing about and it's what I tell talk about and it's what they dance about now. And what we're left with is this I don't know, intangible heritage. You can't put that in a glass case. You can film it, but it's not the same. You've got to be there. You've got to feel it. You've got to be in there in a moment. I feel dance is a very, very accessible art form. Um, I think you can you can sing about cotton. You can you can read poems about cotton, but to actually see the physicality of these cotton mill workers and to I mean, to explore it through movement, through sound, through song, through all these different places, I think it's the most, most accessible and most powerful way of telling these stories.